Can L from Death Note catch Johan Liebert from Monster? Someone who was able to convince everyone he didn't exist and painted everyone else as the suspect. Someone who doesn't even have a known real name, at least until the end of Monster, when the mother tells Tenma. And we ourselves don't know his real name either. A mysterious past with multiple different scenarios is it possible. Well, let's at least find out why L would be trying to solve mysterious family murders anyways. El Loli and Death Note went out of his way to solve the Kira case, a case that had mysterious heart attacks. As described in Death Note BBK's novel by Nisio Eason, El only goes out of his way to solve cases if there is $1 million on the line or 10 victims or more. By the end of Monster, at least hundreds of people are murdered. No one would be offering $1 million in Germany at this point, so this would be his reason on going to solve these family murders. In this timeline, Monster's characters are still in this, but the only addition is L going to Germany. Not out of character, as he went to Japan for Kira. Both of these cases are not easy to solve by any means. Johann Lieber is able to leave no trace of murders, due to his way of killing people whether a higher to kill, or indirect, or direct. It is usually hard to trace. El Lolliet, of course, isn't any average detective, unlike anyone in Monster by any means. Maybe Lunge being a high tier, but because of his fixation on Tenma and the perfect way Johan was able to make Tenma seem like he was one that committed the murders, Lunge might not be so high tier. Lunge was certain on someone like Tenma. Funny how Lunge also has weird habits like L and also fixated on a suspect, and they both believed they were right. Depending on what L needs, he may want to contact the police just like how he did with Kira. But with L. Lolliet as someone who isn't an average detective, as stated in the BB murder case, L's ability in 2002 was equivalent of five ordinary investigative bureaus and seven intelligence agencies. This is near the BB case, and this is stated by the time he faces against Kira that the numbers had leapt several more notches. At just eight years old, being able to prevent World War III. This was before Whammy's house as well. As stated before, El's intelligence had increased as he got older. Johan himself is no slacker when it comes to being naturally intelligent, part of an experiment by Bonaparte. His parents were matched perfectly to make perfect children. This includes looks and intelligence. Johan is brilliant and a prodigy of some sort, not normal and overall excellent in whatever he studies, and the absolute best in anything he pursues able to quickly learn languages, and his knowledge in law and economics is able to impress Schuvold, which was someone who was a key player in the economical part of Germany. Which after he impressed Schuvold, Schuvold states Johann is legitimately perfect for his role, and states that no one could surpass Johann in anything. But he stays with Karl, and Karl feels jealous with the attention Johann gets. El Loli is someone who at least doesn't care about dropping bodies for a case, almost for any sacrifice to win. Like Yagami was someone who was versing two L successors, who arguably are more cracked, depending on if Light actually increased in intelligence after beating L, and L is greater or equal to Light in raw intelligence. That's how crazy this guy L is. Then we also know in the BB murder case that to be considered a win for L, he has to prove who the suspect is, like in Kira's case, or proving the BB killings. With this, we at least know that to be considered a win for L, it'd be proving the suspect guilty. This is why throughout Death Note, with L lying about his genuine suspicion about Light, which he said was about 5% when it was actually 95%, or for stating that L is certain about Light here, after meeting him and psychoanalyzing Light. The only problem with this battle was L's ability with not being able to prove that Light was Kira. With Johan Liebert, the battle comes down to actually catching him. Something that even if you find out who Johan Liebert is, it's pretty hard. We know at least that L is very unreactive and wouldn't fall prey to Johan Liebert's gaze, unlike Tenma. L won't freeze when trying to capture him. We know he is unreactive in almost anything, almost like near when the SPK were blowing their heads off. The only time L really overreacts or reacts in general is finding out about the Shinigami, something that is mind-blowing and supernatural, and other times are usually just acting. While L is able to judge people based on reactions and put multiple tests for the task force to see if they were Kira, a genius in all things including manipulation, acting, and psychoanalyzing, Johann Lieber is also not a slacker in this category. Due to his natural intelligence and learnt knowledge, Johann is able to assess people's psychology their motivations and behavior, proven by him able to learn of the weaknesses of Detective Richard, and throughout the entire encounter, Johann subtly leads the detective to slowly arguably wanting to take his life, proven by the subtle hints, hinting at his mistakes of the past, throwing in the rights of a person, and low-key mocking Richard passively aggressively, hinting at the daughter he had at home, which he uses against him on the rooftop. How can someone who has a daughter have killed a young man? Of course, we know that this young man was someone from 511 Kinderheim, a torturous institution to brainwash children and remove feelings and adding hatred to make them perfect soldiers. 
and all of this subtle manipulation slowly leads to Johan isolating the detective, leading him to the bottle of wine, which makes him take his own life. Which, this is the best evidence for Johan killing him instead of pushing him off, which a lot of people think by the way. Johan Lieber himself is a monster, the monster of the series and monster, the main antagonist, which uses people's inner dark selves and hidden weaknesses against them. This theme carries with each person Johan Lieber faces. With L, this won't be so easy. If L were to meet Johan, which we can discuss later, L isn't as average as all the people Johan manipulates. While Johan's ability to persuade him being a leader is second to none, being compared to the next guy, that is, uh, yeah. With L, though even with like Yagami, who for some reason has charisma off the charts, has girls fall for him easily, and is able to persuade someone like Naomi Misora, despite her having no love interest with him, just has charisma like that, which L doesn't respond to or fall for. And in quotes, he calls Light too perfect. Johan Liebert, like Light, is on the appearance is a very handsome young man who can persuade anyone. For someone like L, though, this may not be the case. This is, of course, if they were to meet. Johan is able to predict precisely on what people will do as he understands the nature of people and planned out his perfect suicide, which before was a goal to be the last person on Earth. To be able to do things like this, you have to be very analytical, observational, calculating, tactical, and have a high deductive reasoning skills. He's able to control everything, which from the surface seems like it's natural. Along with the previous skills he has, he makes for a pretty formidable opponent. The problem with this though is that, is L really falling for all this? The whole point of Johan is the appearance of the kind person, and behind is a monster, pure evil. L is not going to fall for this however, if they met face to face. If you're enjoying this video so far, please subscribe. We have close to 6k and I want to hit at least 10k by the end of the year. Also, I'll continue to make some more content like this in the future. Thank you. L. Lilliet would learn of this case and investigate it, first judging on how these murders are being committed, with them having no trace left. The question of if L himself contacts the police is questionable, and this would lead to Johan's trick of leaving Tenma being framed. And that leaves us with another question. Would L investigate Tenma? The possibility is high. The reason is, L is no novice and will scrutinize over any details and will be going over anything that is sent. This is how Light originally first tricked L with sending useless cards that he would analyze. While well, this was actually him testing the death note and learning of its capabilities, with leaving messages each test of the notebook and eventually leading to a meaningless message. So it's actually possible that Ten will be looked into, though because of L's ego not exactly blinding him most of the time, and unlike Lunge, is at least always right. Which he actually was against Light, whereas Lunge was wrong, but was so certain because of Johan's outstanding way of framing Tenma. L most likely after psychoanalyzing Tenma, and probably sending someone to spy on him, which will either say is the FBI which he had sent in the Kira case. If this happens, you could say Tenma could help L, and just tell him who Johan is. This is the first way L could find Johan through Tenma himself. Of course, this is possible. Because as I said, if he does contact the police and learn that Tenma is a suspect, he would do everything to actually see if this is true. It's also true that L wouldn't go under all of the evidence alone and would be also using his own suspect meter he has or whatever. With someone being able to commit so many murders and leave no trace, it's possible that there are many different cover-ups like framing and manipulation. This is something L can consider and wouldn't be crazy to think, outside of fan theory. We also know L would still not go under evidence after meeting Tenma himself. Of course, L himself can just go because he's not outright revealing himself as the world's greatest detective. Arguably, if anyone knows who L is, because Light didn't either, only certain people did, though it's possible. Anyways, if L can find out about Johan through this, then all it comes up to is playing into Johan's trap while L is in the shadows. L himself is very discreet, and since we have L, we also have Watery, which can also do meddling. Watery himself is L's own little weapon. He does things like putting cameras in the Yagami household and torture people if needed. Because Johan's goal is to bring Tenma to him, which depends on what point this is in the storyline, and how Johan's goals change in discovering himself. If this is early on in the case, then all L has to do is use Tenma to get close to Johan. Like I stated before, L won't feel threatened by Johan, and because L is very discreet and makes the utmost effort to stay mysterious, we know that L could send in a stand-in, or whatever if needed. L wouldn't be too close to police unlike the Kira task force because Johan wouldn't know L is onto him. I mention this because L only shows his face to the Kira task force after narrowing down the people he at least trusts. This is also due to Light forcing L to reveal himself to gain back the trust of the police. Because before that, Light had set up a battle between the police and L, 
where they both investigated each other. So now that we know this, we know that Johan's corrupt police officers or pawns will not be finding about L anytime soon. Johan thinking Tenma is the only one. L can come in and apprehend him through hired people, or L himself doesn't even have to make contact with Johan, and can make Tenma seem like Tenma will shoot him to keep Johan taunting Tenma. Now if they can actually capture Johan is another thing. If L considers that Alberto is there, he probably will be dealt with, but capturing Johan within Germany isn't right either because of corrupt policemen. This may be a thing El considers, or maybe Johan gets this over him and actually tricks El. Though Tenma does have information that supposed respected cops were corrupt, which is shown in the start of the series where Tenma and Anna are in the cop car. With all of the corruption, Johan probably has a plan to escape, which like I said, still might actually be able to get one over on L. We know this could actually happen with Johan's extensive influence, and this could come down to actually L capturing him. But because of Johan's goal, he would have eyes on him either way. This really depends, to be honest, if he does escape. Most likely, he still doesn't know L because there was no need for L to meet him. But if he does escape somehow, then he at least knows that someone with some genius intellect was able to orchestrate this through the shadows. The reason we know Johan may have people from the outside is because of the series and also because of Johan's way to create followers, friends, and accomplices through a couple interactions shown through the killer, who was convinced his friend, Aerith, who is a fake name Johan went by, was right and he went to kill for him. He even wondered why he committed these murders because of Johan's way of isolating people's brains into only thinking that he is their only option and that there is one option. He did the same thing with the detective too. Johan being able to leave impressions like this leads him to have a huge base of people he can use. He was able to amass tons of wealth and power without being noticed and had multiple things being ran by him which were just ways of him taking over to get more wealth and power. Having a money laundering business, which he set up at a young age shortly after leaving the hospital. Not only are most of his kills through manipulated people, but he also left kids to play rooftop games to test fate out, just like how he tests fate with letting his sister shoot his head. The problem comes up after being captured, that Johan is a master of disguise and managed to dress up as his sister. He did this of course to gain information, but knowing this will be hard. However, because in this scenario, L is with Tenma, and most likely having Tenma updating him, leading him to go find information. L would discover more about Johan, like 501 Kinderheim, and his relation to multiple things we learn about him, like an incorrect diagnosis of leading him to think Johan has a split personality disorder. This information can also lead L to psychoanalyzing stuff like that, and a funny thing to think about is L finding where Johan will attend school. This is if L hadn't already captured Johan in that previous case. Now this is another scenario, so before that was the scenario early game, and now we can have the mid scenario where L is trying to find Johan through this way, and this is another way L could find Johan. If L is able to figure out a pattern with Johan taking influence of power, the only problem is how hard it would be to find out, as most can't figure it out until it's glaringly obvious that he has a plan. Of course, if L predicts this, or even so learns that he will be going to school, a cool thing to think about is if L goes to psychoanalyze Johan himself. L has to make this not an intentional attempt and make it seem natural. Unlike Light, Johan may just start plotting to kill him. L could have had procedures done, however, to also prevent an outcome like this, and if he gets a sense of any threat, he will catch him and try to torture him or something for information. Something L does with Misa. And actually has more than just standing and not being able to move. As you can see there, there are tools on the table where Watari is. So he doesn't mind torturing like that. Whatever it comes down to, L will not kill Johan as he wants to extract information and prove Johan is guilty. Which because L is smart, he will lay multiple traps if he learns of Johan's identity. For either waiting till Johan leads Tenma to him, or if L makes a preemptive move, which isn't out of character as long as it's with a purpose. Is it possible, however, without Tenma, L still finds about Johan? Well, we know at least that if he was working with just Watery and connected to the police, that he could find out the potential suspect of Johan Liebert, and how there's a report that this guy Tenma thinks that this guy is real. This is if maybe L joins the case a bit later. I actually think L would analyze Tenma himself and judge from his own eyes or a stand-in who relays information that Tenma is fine. We at least know whatever happens that Johan is in the lead because he set up everything to take over power and lead people on a wild goose chase. Unlike Light, Johan wouldn't announce himself publicly, L doesn't do a broadcast unless he's willing to bluff and say that he does know who the killer is, but I don't know if that works out so well. Light only reacted to L because of his ego and pride for his belief of being truly good with the idea of justice, and Johan doesn't possess this and is a literal devil inside of a 
kind looking man. He's a true monster who uses people's sins against them. Whatever it comes down to, L has nothing Johan uses against him because L is simply a very non-reactive person or maybe a bit more unhinged. L, someone who also wouldn't be publicly announcing himself to the public for a broadcast in this situation, Johan has no idea of knowing who L is. While L does have some flaws such as being childish and hating to lose, this drive not to lose is also what helps him solve cases and has a laser vision focus. If it comes down to it, he may be able to prevent Johan from preventing his perfect suicide or even beforehand if they are trying to catch Johan and do it without the German police. Which in that case, all L has to do is able to convince that Tenma is innocent and after maybe using bad methods to torture any subordinates of Johan or maybe Johan himself, which Johan to be honest isn't in character to actually reveal information and probably welcomes pain if it leads to death. Either way, I don't see it. Even with all the crazy stats Johan has, it's more in a confrontational sense whereas L would go about it with the indirect sense. If L does slip up somehow, this can lead to his death. Maybe a snipe in the head from Alberto if he was hidden and they didn't consider this. Now, we also have another scenario which can actually lead to L to at least learning more, especially with investigating, which can either lead him to Tenma anyways, or actually just linking everything. We know L was linking everything together already with the deaths of people who by a normal person would never even investigate it and consider it murder. He did the broadcast to prove where Kira was, and also that Kira was real and killed people. Because of this suspecting brain of his, he will investigate on the specific reason of mainly killing foster families. This could leave Elle with profiling the killer as someone who has something against them, maybe an orphan and wanted revenge or something else. Of course, the real reason was because Johan is a monster who went into different families to live under for each town, who used a different identity, and then once he was done, he would kill them to leave no traces of who he was and what he looks like, embodying the picture book he subconsciously does most of the time. Something that people don't understand that Johan is a person who gets influence a lot in the series and became a monster through this because of how much messed up things happened to him. This once again is Johan himself wanting to prove that anyone can be like him and feed into their inner dark sides. Anyways, this can lead L to investigating all orphans within at least a part of Germany. Maybe he does all of Germany, which leads him to 511 Ginderheim. This could lead him to the sick, twisted guy who used to be part of 501 Ginderheim, maybe like Tenma, where they could capture him if 501 Ginderheim is a place where they wanted to look at. This is possible as an orphanage that supposedly abused people is what would get a person riled up for revenge against different caretakers. However, this may lead to a dead end, however. Honestly, this just depends on how L will gather information from here. Personally, as L does, he wouldn't do this himself, and I think this is way more time consuming and he'd just contact the police after finding some link ups, or eventually finding out the police suspect Ten. In the end though, we at least know that maybe L dies due to a slip up, which is probably unlikely, or it leads him to capturing Johan, and Johan keeps escaping, and both end up facing each other. But because of Johan's lack of ego like light, this is not a battle of pride be yet a fun game L could entertain himself with. If L replaced Lunge, the same thing will probably happen as your humble frame him either way. If Lunge himself and the other police work and update L, the same thing happens with L investigating Tenma to find out if he is the murderer. If this is a place where it is more modern day, which I didn't want to do as monster is meant to be placed in a very early age where believers and people wanting to replace that guy happened, Johan is simply not like light and L is not going to face Johan unless he needs to. However, even being a monster within the series, El the Liar, someone who is misunderstood, may be eaten by it because maybe he is indeed a monster.